Welcome everyone. I'm excited to be here for our free webinar session presented by Netronic and sponsored by Sabre Limited. I'm also very excited to introduce today's topic, which is how to achieve visual integrated project planning and resource scheduling with Dynamics 365 Business Central. I'll take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Donna Simonovic, the marketing manager here at Sabre Limited, and our expert presenters today are Paulina, business development manager, and Martin, CEO and co-owner of Netronic. Sabre Limited is located in Cambridge, Ontario, and is an expert in Dynamics Business Central ERP implementation and training for the manufacturing industry. We estimate that today's webinar will take up to 45 minutes of your time, and all of our webinars are recorded and select ones will be loaded on YouTube. So be sure to go to our YouTube channel to check out more videos and subscribe to our channel so that you receive the notifications when new content is added. To ensure the best quality, everyone will be in listen only mode, but if you do have questions that come up during the webinar, please go ahead and submit those by clicking on the chat icon and then typing your question in the pop-up chat pane and we'll answer your questions at the end of the session. So now I'll like, I'd will like i like to hand it over to Paulina and Martin for uh, to begin the webinar. Okay, thanks Donna. Thanks for the introduction and uh, thanks for having us today uh, with your webinar. Um, so my name is Martin. Um, I'm from Germany. So we are a German-based company, Netronic Software. We are, uh, have been partnering with Sabre Limited for quite a while. And what we do at Netronic is we build visual scheduling at extensions for Business Central. With me is Paulina. Paulina um, works with us in Germany. She's from Mexico and she works with our North American and also with the Spanish speaking partners. So Hello. today, So today I'm going to discuss with you visual project planning and resource scheduling and how you can achieve this with Dynamics 365 Business Central. And before we look at how to achieve this, maybe we start um, to talk about what you actually want to achieve when we talk about project planning and resource scheduling. Because in the end, um, every scheduling effort or every scheduling activity that you do is targeted at achieving an equilibrium. So whenever you do planning, whenever do you do scheduling, whenever you do project planning, resource scheduling or both, what you want to do is an achieve an equilibrium between your supply of internal resources and the demand for those resources, right? You want to get those into a balance. So what, what should not happen is that you have whatever, the good thing is maybe is, is you have too much demand for your internal resources, but then this is an imbalance and you have to figure out how you can get this balance either by getting in more resources or by uh, sourcing stuff out. And likewise, if there is an imbalance between like if you have too much resources and too less demand, then also this is not ideal for scheduling. So ultimately, when it comes to, to planning and scheduling, what you want to do is you want to get your your supply of resources uh, like in a balance with the demand for resources. And when we talk about uh, projects and when we talk about business central and projects, then the demand for internal resources is specified and described with what is called in Dynamics 365 Business Central, the job planning lines, whereas the supply of the resources comes from how you set up the resource groups and resources. And ultimately, the purpose of scheduling is to get those into like a balance. So if you wonder what the minimum data that is required for visual planning is, then this is actually not that much. So with all the products that we build at Netronic, we try to make sure that the requirements for you in terms of having master data, setting up master data as are as low as possible so that we can help you get started fast. So in order to, to kind of work with the product, which is called Visual Job Scheduler, which I will show you in a minute, um, you you just in quote need to have set up those two things here. You need to have to, uh, to set up resource groups and resources. And, and for the resources, you need to specify what is called the resource calendar. 
because the resource calendar is like the minimum feasible definition of capacity. And resource calendar in business central language means you need to say, okay, that resource has a 40 hour week. So this resource is available Monday to Friday, eight hours a day, or that resource is a part-time worker. They work Monday to Wednesday, eight hours and have Thursday and Friday off. So, so this is something that you need to set up. So you need to set up your resources and you need to specify basically when they work and how much they work. And this then is your pool or this is the capacity that you have. This is your your the supply of your internal resources and the demand for the internal resources. They come from what business center wise is called the job planning lines. So the job planning lines, they provide the minimum feasible definition of the demand. So they say, who is needed, when is this person, this resource needed, and for how long. So these job planning lines, they they don't exist on its own within Business Central, so they require the existence of job tasks, and job tasks require the existence of a job. So basically, you have to define a project, which is called job in Business Central, then this project has some tasks, and for these tasks, you define the when, the who, and the how long, which is the job planning lines. And, and that's it. So that's it. What, what we require you to have in place in terms of master data to do a proper visual scheduling, a visual project and job scheduling, as you will see in a couple of minutes. And the product that makes this happen is a product that is called Visual Job Scheduler. It is a resource and project planning drag and drop front end to the standard jobs and resource modules of Dynamics 365 Business Central. So obviously you, you can get the VJS, the visual job scheduler uh, uh, from your partner Sabre. Um, they can install it in your business central system if you're on-prem, but they can also help you deploy it if you're on the cloud from AppSource. So this is a standard product that integrates with standard business central. We build it in a way that it meets the highest quality requirements from Microsoft. So we, whenever we build a new version, we send it to Microsoft to approve it for app source. And this is like the toughest certification that you currently can get as a Microsoft developer. So I have built a, a, a very simplistic use case that we will look out now through the course of this webinar. And the, the simplistic use case, and it's really simple. So I made it, it, it very simple. Um, but but what I had in mind is a is an engineering to order company, a small engineering to order company with just a few resources, but that you just get the principle um, that that typically has two sources of revenue. So is the installation of a new system, whatever the system could be. This could be like shading systems for buildings. This could be buildings itself. It could be like security technology where you have software and hardware uh, combined or like other stuff that you engineer to order. So the installation of these new systems is typically a revenue source. And the other is that once you have this installed, then uh, hopefully you earn also from maintaining and repairing those systems that you have deployed for your customers. And so the typical process is whenever there is a new customer, there is a project leader, somebody who takes care for the complete project from um, from start to finish. Typically, there are like engineering type of resources, like somebody who works on CAD uh, drawings with CAD technology, like like specifying this out. Um, or sometimes there's a technical office kind of to kind of yeah, determine all the specifications of those custom parts that get installed. Sometimes um, we we deal with engineering to order company who who kind of um, also produce some proprietary parts that maybe uh, are part of this security system or these solar panels. Um, and sometimes they produce them in house, and sometimes they have outsourced the complete production process. And then, of course, once everything is engineered and once all the parts are available, then you go to the customer and install it on site. And I have built a business central database that mirrors a little bit this case. And so before we actually go into the planning and scheduling itself, so let's let's have a look on the visual elements of project and resource planning. So let's have a first look 
to our visual job scheduler and let me quickly um, log into my business central system again. And, and what I have here is like from a resource perspective. So maybe we look, let's look first at my capacity, my supply of capacity. We have resource group. So in my case, I have um, a resource group. So that is the project lead. I have a technical office. I have like production in here, but in my case, I mirror that it is outsourced production. And then I have field installation resources. And if we look at my resources, then you see that, for example, within my, let me make this broader. Ah, that was broad. Sorry for that. Let me get rid of the filter. Um, like you have, I have a couple of resources here, and maybe we now get the filter again and filter by resource group. Um, you see that I have like like Linda, Mark and Mary as my project managers and they, they have set them up in a way that they you would see it when we drill into this. Um, I, I gave them like unit cost, different unit costs and uh, if you drill into those, um, you would see that they all are set up to work um, eight hours a day, Monday to Friday. And then I have like a, a little bit of weird resource and I will come to this in my demo. So this is my capacity site. So I have the resource groups. I build resources that that fall into all these resource groups. So you can see that I have also resources that fall into the in the technical office and so on and so forth. And also I have a lot of field installation guys here that that will be part of my visual schedule. Likewise, um, of course, I have jobs. And and these jobs determine the demand for these resources. And you see there are quite different type of jobs. So there are two that were in my system that I weren't that I weren't able to get rid of. Um, then I have like the the real jobs, and I have some jobs that I call templates or master projects. And I will come to this over the course of the demo again. And within this job, maybe we look at this this job 140 this Selangorian service and repair job. You see, and this is all standard business central. This has nothing to do with what we have built is you have a job number, you can define the customer, and then you de can define your job task. So I need to do some issue analysis and afterwards the field repair. Um, and with the issue analysis, I have to send somebody on site. They need to do a technical assessment. Um, and with the customer uh, together, we need to review the corrective actions that that were suggested with the technical assessment. And if we are fine with this, then we can send people for the field repair and they need, they need the, to do the on-site repair and then maybe get the approval for the customer that everything is fine. And then um, we can drill down into this further. So when we look at these on-site visit assessment, then from Standard Business Central, again, there are the job planning lines and the job planning lines define the when and the who and the how much. So on the 26th of January, we need Alan for 16 hours. This is what it says. And likewise, we have job planning lines for all these activities or for these job tasks, as they are called, and they determine like the demand that is coming from this project. And by the way, you have the capability to define the color with which you want to see a project in the visual schedule. And here, this is project is shown somewhat um, in a blue color. So now let's let's bring together the information that we looked at right now from a tabular perspective, and let's bring them together visually via the product called VJS. So now I'm opening the visual job scheduler. The visual job scheduler is directly integrated as an extension into Business Central. So it's not a product that sits outside the ERP system, but it's a product that lives directly within the ERP system. We don't take data out of the ERP and send it to another database. Um, I would I feel that this would always cause some data security uh, issues, but we stay within the Business Central database, which 
kind of adheres with the with the highest possible data security standards that you can get on the marketplace. So it's all completely integrated. Um, when I start the VJS, a filter dialog pops up. I will come to this later. Um, but now I just say, OK, show me my projects. And then we are reading information basically from all the tables that I just ran through. Um, and now you see a visual representation of my project of my schedule for all the projects that I loaded. So here in what we call the job view, we see all projects by their status. So if they are open, if they are planned or if they are quoted or completed and every line here represents one project. We have a timeline and in my timeline, I'm basically looking a month back and a couple of months into the future. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out into this timeline. So if I would be interested in this project, in this red project that is in May, I would just kind of position my mouse here and zoom into May, scroll it a little bit to the left and then see this project. Um, we look at all the data um, right now here from a project perspective. And if we remember this project 140, and by the way, if you remember this project 140, it looked like this, didn't it? So you can double click on the project in the visual schedule and then you get back to the project card in Business Central. So here in my case, I just have this one monitor, but we have a lot of customers who actually have two screens and then this would be on the right hand screen and the other one would be on the left hand screen. So you can easily look back and forth between Business Central, Standard Business Central data and the job scheduler. So what you see here is like the project number. I see the customer number and I see the description of the project and I see the project number on these bar. So this bar uh, determines now when the project is meant to start and when it is finished. This vertical line represents the day now. So this is like today in my demo environment. It's the 28th of January. Um, so the demo data is a bit outdated, but I think it's still OK. And if we still again look at the project, we actually see that on this project card, the starting date and the ending date, which are dates that you can define, they are empty. Um, so if they are empty, we kind of run through all the job planning lines that are under hidden under these job tasks. And then we take the earliest job planning line and the latest to determine the start and the end of the project. And like on the project card, you now could drill down um, and we did it before into the job tasks and the job planning lines. We can also do from here. So from here, I can go back and see, OK, I have my issue analysis. It starts here, it finishes here, then the field repair. I can drill down further and I see, OK, I have my on-site uh, visit and assessment. I have technical assessment. I have review of corrective actions and then the field repair with on-site repair, customer review. And if I want to drill down into everything, I also can say expand all. And then I see the complete project structure. And if there are dependencies, so if I need to do this first and then those after that, and once this is done, this can start, then you see we can also with the VJS define those dependency. What you also see is, um, and this is a little bit uh, hard to see. We have this little green underscore here on this blue bar. This green underscore shows us the uh, percentage of completion for this project. And you actually see that for those bars here that represents the job task, we also see a percentage of completion. So this activity with the gray underscore is completed to 100%. And you see that this is done, which is actually a good sign because remember, we are here. This is today. This was scheduled to be to happening uh, to, to happen yesterday and the day before yesterday. So I also get information about the project progress and percentage of completion on the respective job tasks. So now from here, from this, what we call the job view, we can see the timing of all jobs that we loaded plus like the timing of the job task and the job structure. And of course we can drag and drop stuff, but I will show this later in, the, uh, in this demo. But what we also can do is we can actually see how 
we have not only time scheduled the project, but also how we have resource scheduled, for example, Alan. So either from here, resource view, or from here on a right click, I can say, I can say show in resource view. So I can look at this job planning line, which kind of basically said that Alan was scheduled on the 26th on this job for 16 hours. I can also say show me this in the resource view and then we flip the view. We look at the same data, but now from the perspective of the resource groups and the resources and you see that the um, the job planning line from which I triggered this switch is highlighted here and it blinks. So Alan is one of my field guys and now I see OK from here like this week Alan was just scheduled on that project next week. He has that project coming up the week after he's busy with this project and I can quickly see from here like uh, now I'm by I'm on my field guys when my field guys are scheduled when they have free time and I see this for all my resources. Plus what I can also do from here, I can also look at something that we call a histogram and this makes perfect sense, especially on the resource group level. So here I can see day by day what the utilization of all my project managers is. So I have like these three project managers and they I see the degree of utilization per day. And likewise, I could do this, for example, here with my field guys so that I see when they are sufficiently loaded, when I have a good workload for them, but also when I kind of better need to get a job to get my technicians busy um, again here in this week 10. So this is information that we provide. And now let's have a look and on how we can can work and schedule with this information. But before we do so, I just want to go quickly back to PowerPoint and share another thought with you. Now we understood the basics and the typical questions that where, where you look at scheduling software to provide help with are questions like, okay, now I saw this schedule, but now I have a new inquiry. What can I tell my customer? When can I deliver? Or like a customer has a service issue and, and they need help and, and, and maybe he needs also a special person to provide this help because it is better to send the guy who installed the stuff with him than somebody who is completely clueless about installation. So I, I want to have a quick answer. So when is this guy available next so that I can send him to the customer? So these are some typical questions and you can get help answering these questions with visual scheduling, like with the product that we just looked at. However, before we look at how to answer those questions with the visual job schedule, let's talk about another thing. And this is, I would say, true for most of the project-oriented companies we have been working with, independent if you are if you are an engineering to order company or if you're a marketing agency, if you are a software company. Typically, typically, if you are a project, if you have a project driven business, then you have, you will have project. This is my bet. You will have project that follow similar pattern, that follow similar project structure. So before you jump into an ERP system and kind of try to play around with the visual scheduler, just identify project where you have similar structures and then if you want to take it serious with visual production scheduling, first get your hands on a little bit dirty with your ERP system and build for those projects that have a similar structure, build project templates in Business Center. And I said, get your hands dirty in Business Center before you do the fancy stuff with the visual scheduler by setting up template, but don't do it as 80% of the people coming from my country in Germany would do it. They would make it over complicated. They would over engineer it and they would make it sophisticated and they would think about every job planning line if they put in information right or wrong. Don't do it. Make it quick and dirty. Build project templates that mirror the typical structure of the product, but don't make it perfect. But then use the visual job scheduler 
to time schedule your templates. So let's let's just have a look again at what I did in terms of templating and what I do mean with making it a little bit quick and dirty. So let's exit the VJS for um, for a moment and go back to my jobs. And as I said before, I have those jobs that start with number J. These are my project that we have just seen in the sample database, but then I have jobs that I call master project. And I have a master project for a very complex system implementation. So if you have a, if you have a quick look at it, I really took time to build a quite complex project structure with technical specification, getting design approval, um, uh, uh, then doing some some tooling and fixture design, then some outsourced manufacturing, and then the field installation with maybe going a first step, which could be if it's a building, the, doing the first floor, then the second floor, then the third floor, and this also in phases. So like, like if this is a building, maybe this is the flooring first, and then it's setting up the walls, and then it's painting or whatever. You get the principle. So this is quite, and then in the end, it's final acceptance uh, with the customers who get the approval. So I, I set it up quite complex. For the webinar, I also built a project with is a little bit simpler. Um, where I'm using just, I said, okay, I need a project lead, then somebody in tech office, outsource production, installation, and then the project lead again to get the the um, to get the exceptions from the customer. And if we go there, of course, there are job planning lines. And the job planning lines again, they are they are very very simple. I set them up in a very simplistic way. So I just said, okay, for the pro for the first step for the project lead, I just need a project lead, and typically for those type of projects, I need them 16 hours. And when I said I need a project lead, then you see on a resource I specified a resource that looks a little bit weird. So I didn't specify that this should be my resource man uh, my my project manager. Martin or Peter or Paulina or whomever, but we actually introduced um, a virtual resource that you can use to first schedule activities like to the group that you say, hey, I need a project manager, I don't know whom, and then when I'm going to plan the project itself, then I can say, okay, this should go to Paulina or this should go to Alan or this should go to Donna. Um, and I just took an average value. So this is a template and I built a couple of template also for like service and repair project for a, a, a leaner um, installation for simple installation. So I have quite a bit of templates. And again, you can look, you can look at those templates also visually. So I can like now I said just show my project template. So I apply a different filter so that I can just look at those templates in a visual way and check if I set up the structures in the right way. And if I look at my master project here for the webinar, let me let me expand this. And actually this already looks good. So initially I set them up in a way that all those job planning lines were on one day. And then I just move them around so that they mirror the right structure of the product. So now that I have some templates, actually what I, I can do, and let me quickly jump back. Now that I have these templates, and now let's get produce case. Now, now let's model the case that I get a new inquiry. I get a new inquiry, and this inquiry, this project that is now uh, 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 um, requested by my customer mirror is is kind of a typical project for which I have this template that we just looked at. So actually now we have no hand and egg issue because you have a template and what you should do with you first should create a new project that is the requ uh, the requ requisition from your customer based on that standard template. Then go to the VJS, do some time scheduling, then do the resource scheduling and see if you can starve the project. And if not, then do some fine tuning. But the process is always the same. Build a project based on the template, look at it visually, get it right from a timing perspective, 
and then resource schedule it. And this is something that we can now look at. And this, the demo that I show you next, is actually is the demo that gives you the answer to the question, hey, I got a new inquiry. When can I deliver it? So let me build a new job. So I go to jobs and I have a new requirement. So this is my new job, 370. It's the new job in the webinar. The customer requesting this is the Canon Group. Um, when I'm in the VJS, I want to see this job in, let me take green is the color of this day. So I want to see this in green. And now you see there are no job planning line, no job tasks. But what I can say is uh, under actions, copy, copy job task from. And hey, I'm a lazy guy. I did the template. So now I can select the job task from the template. And this is standard business central functionality. No credit on us. Lots of credit on Microsoft that they allow this um, with a product. I, so I take this master job. I copy the, the task from the first task to the last one. So from the project lead to the project lead again, I copy the quantities and I copy that to this new job. And hopefully this works. Yeah, so now you see this job is populated with data. And now that I created this job, I want to schedule it, right? So now let's go back to the VJS. And then we look at the projects again. And now you see I have this nice green new project, the new job in the webinar, and I can expand it all and look at it. And now here's the thing. So now this is just a template. And now I know, okay, this customer, and I ignore this for the time being. Um, I know this, we said we do the time scheduling first. So I get a notification that I have an issue with my resources, but, but forget about it. So now, um, I already know this job was now, we do the time scheduling first, and this job was copied from the template, so it has the exact position as my template job head. But the customer that requested, they said, okay, hey, we have this project coming up, and we would be ready to start in week seven if you are ready. So the first thing for me to do is, I would take the whole job and move it to the starting date that the customer was requesting. So I moved the job and then all job planning lines, boom, they moved so that I now start here. Then I know that that this customer and this project is is a little bit different. It's it's really, it's a little bit different than, than my template. The template is a template, it mirrors the average, but this job, I know that the preparation with the customer will be a little bit longer because I dealt with the customer in the past uh, already, and I know they have a zillion of questions and they are not that clear on the specification. So I know my, my project management overhead will be a little bit more in the beginning. So I think I will don't I, 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 I won't make it with two days of project management, but maybe I need three. So I can on the right mouse click say, okay, I need to change the quantity. My demand for this task is not 16 hours, but it's 24 hours. So I do this, the bar get longer, the rest got pushed out. And I need I know that their specifications are tricky, so I know, okay, actually, I, I will have a demand not for 24 hours here, but I know my technical office, Jesus, they will they will work on this like 48 hours, maybe. So I do this, and again, this happens. Then I know, okay, actually, I need two guys in my technical office working on this. So I need the one guy, whatever to do the CAD drawings and another one needs to do another type of specification. So I actually need two persons. So what I can do from here is I can split this, right? So I can say, hey, actually I want to split this into two tasks, um, each 24 hours, or maybe, maybe one guy is going to work on this 32 and the, own, uh, the other 16. So I split this into two parts. Um, I do this. We take into account the structure of the job and this just this this line has just been created. So you see I'm now 
time scheduling the project and because this got a little bit shorter, there is now a gap in between. So I can say, OK, from here I want to schedule all successors so that first when I do the time scheduling, I have no gaps in here and maybe I know that that I will also need four field technicians so I can say, OK. Um, I first change the quantity. And you get the principle, make this to 80. Split this again. And now now I'm I'm getting from the template and then I say OK, schedule successors again so that first. The the time range is min is uh, is less uh, is as as minimum as possible. So now you see now I came from the template to a more specific schedule of my project and now actually okay now this is um like like with the demo data that i have i don't get any notification on any of any uh, uh overload uh, with in terms of my resources but i still i would want to check like do i have enough capacity and maybe also i want to get an understanding who is going to do the jobs in this case so then i'm here and you see like my project management tasks they are here on this project manager group and maybe when I'm getting to more to fine tuning or when the customer I see now there is no I, I didn't get any notification about resource overload so I can basically say to the customer okay we can start in week seven and we will be ready by the end of week 10 with this project and now maybe I got the lock in from the 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 the, um, the the green light from the customer and then I can say okay now I need to block the resources because right now this is just on this like um, not specified project manager group. I just know that I need a project manager, but then I can say, okay, actually Mary will do the job. So I can assign the task from the group to the individual. And now I signed it from the project manager. And now it is with Mary. And likewise, I can say, okay, for the technical office, um, I need definitively Paul. And then I can assign it from the unspecified group to a specific resource. And then I can say, OK, for this tough, tough job, um, I need also like Timothy to help because he has free capacity. And so now I can after. After I I created the job from the template and time scheduled it, I changed like the timing with, with moving the entire job left and right. I now can resource schedule it. I can decide to which outsourcing to which job shop should you go. So so that this is really this is just good luck that this fits in here. Um, I, I didn't be prepare it in this level of detail, but I can say, OK, for this job shop, I have some some uh, cap uh, capacity left, so I give this job to them so it will get back here. Maybe we know how these job shops are. Maybe they 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 will return it a bit late. So maybe I build in a bit of gap here and then say, OK, here, this is actually the free week where I needed to get a job so I can say, OK, my field technicians and they start, should not start working directly when it comes out of, the, out of the job shop, but maybe a day later. So I move it to Steve. And then I move it like to start on same day to Reese. And I would move it also to all the others um, so that in the end we will schedule it in a way that by the end of this week we are done because now I can and I don't do it for the others uh, for the sake of time. But you see, I have sufficient time here on those resources so I can can kind of and, and I also see that like with my project with Mary, I have capacity here so I can tell the customer, hey, if we if you are really ready to start by weeks by the beginning of week seven, we are as well. My team is set up. I have time scheduled and I can kind of promise delivery by the end of week 10. And if I'm happy with the schedule, then I can also save this. And then all those job planning lines, all those jobs, all those resource allocations, they get all updated. So now what I scheduled here has become like my new schedule for this project um, within my ERP's data. And with this, let me quickly go back to 
the PowerPoints because what we did is we time scheduled and then resource scheduled. And um, to wrap this up, like you may have got an idea now with a tool like the VJS, like a visual job scheduler, you can really achieve an integrated project planning and resource scheduling. You can really do both. You can plan your project, you can time plan it, but once you've time planned, you can also staff it. You can resource schedule it. And what I've done, this looked nice and easy. And like when you hear that is a visual tool, there's some drag and drop. This also sounds easy. And, and ultimately, this is to some degree nice and easy. However, even if the tool is nice and easy, it does not do the job alone. So you need to learn how to embrace this and you need to learn the best practices and the best tools to um, use of it. So um, besides building products, we also started about building best practices on how to use our product and hence, we not only recommend to you if you want to achieve an integrated project and resource planning, not only um, kind of get the tool, but also get some help from up from us to make sure that you get the biggest value out of the um, out of the tool when it comes to scheduling. And we will work hand in hand with Sabre on this. So Sabre will do all everything that is needed on the business central system on the on the back end. They will help you setting up jobs. They will help you setting up the templates. They will help you designing the structure of the jobs and resource planning models. But when it comes to really scheduling best practices, we also recommend that that we work as a team of three, which is you, which is Sabre, and which is us to make sure that you not only get the biggest value of the ERP, but that you also get the biggest value of ERP plus the visual scheduler. And with this, um, I'm at the end of what I prepared, what I wanted to show you, what I wanted to share with you, and I would like to open it up with question. And if you don't have a question now, but if there comes a question after the session, then you can reach out to Donna and Sabre and team and, and ask them and they will get in contact with us. Or if you like, you can also contact me or contact Paulina, Paulina directly. And then we get the Sabre team involved again. Um, and then we figure it out from there. And with this, uh, first of all, thank you very much for your attention and for being with me and with Sabre in this webinar. And if you have questions, then please let me know. Thank you for watching our videos. Please follow our channel by clicking here to stay up to date with the latest content or click here for more great videos. Don't forget to visit our website at saberlimited.com. We look forward to seeing you next time.